Okay, that was like really high level. We're going to go down like way lower. <laughs> um, so to, this is my first tech talk. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, and to prepare for it, I've been doing stand-up comedy in pubs. So if this, <laughs> if this goes south, I'm just gonna make dirty jokes. <laughs> okay, so pointer to the broccoli of goat. I'm Beth Knight, I work at Cloudflare. Um, and my tech lead is currently in the audience, so I have to get this right. Uh, so, Pointer to the Broccoli of Go um, by Beth Knight, a software developer. I, I built the art and the AI generator. <laughs> so, that is a gopher with broccoli. Um, so, my background, I'm on the firewall team at Cloudflare, and I've been there for about a year. I don't know if I'm supposed to like stand up to this. Doesn't matter, does it? Okay. I really want to like grab it and talk, but I can't. Are you what? Crushing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I've been on the firewall team for about a year, but before that, I was doing TypeScript on the front end. And um, with TypeScript, you don't have to care about pointers, right? We're just passing value around. It's the front end. Nobody cares. Um, so when I moved to the, the firewall team, which is mostly Go, I got this error all the time all the time, uh, which I'm sure most of you have seen. And the reason, um, I didn't understand how to use these characters. <laughs> like I just put them, I saw what other people were doing in the code base and I was like, well, I should put that there. <laughs> like he did it, so I did it too. Um, so I got that wrong. Um, yeah, so I got that error all the time. I wasn't using them correctly. My coworkers were like, why would you do that? And I was said, they did it. <laughs> um, so I did a deep dive into pointers. I wrote a Medium article and enough people liked it that I was like, I'm not the only one who's confused. So I thought it'd be worth a talk. Um, so what even are pointers? Pointers are an address in memory where you store a variable. Pointers, it's an address to point to, please. <laughs> it's an address to point in memory where another variable is stored. Um, it lives in your short-term memory, the RAM. Like it's uh, something you can grab really quickly. Tiny, quick to look up. They look like this hexadecimal right there. It's beautiful, easy to memorize. <laughs> um, <laughs> aren't they cute? <laughs> um, okay, they're not gonna steal artist jobs. <laughs> they're not <laughs> the AI generators. Okay, so why do we even have pointers, right? Besides to confuse front-end people. Uh, memory is the main reason. Um, everything in Go is passed by a value. Um, a function needs a value, but it doesn't necessarily need the original value. So it's efficient memory management. You reference a memory address instead of making a bunch of copies to a variable. Uh, variables. Um, it's also good for sharing data, which I will get to later. But multiple variables can reference the same underlying data. Um, so this ampersand we're actually getting to like the things I got confused about. So the ampersand, it generates a pointer. It's, it is a pointer, but I call it the ampersand. Um, and this accesses the location where it's operating to stored in memory. Uh, and I read a blog post about how they used uh, the book analogy to explain pointers, and I thought that was genius. Where if uh, you had a book, the ampersand would essentially be the page number. Um, and this little star dude uh, allows us to access the values held at that location in memory. Um, it's called dereferencing or indirecting. And if this was a book, this would be the content on the page. So let's take this book analogy further. I really, I should credit that author. I, sorry if you wrote that. <laughs> okay, so let's actually look at some code. I do write code. <laughs> so um, here, oh, it's so small. Okay, can I like zoom in? So I create, you guys can't see that. Should I just read it? I didn't think about this. <laughs> they can see it. Um, I create a variable that's, I assign the variable B to 54, and, this, and that would be like the content of the page. I'm so sorry for the people in the back. I, this did not work out like I thought. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to use the ampersand on the B to create that page number, and I assign it to a new variable, and that'll be C. And if I print out C, what you get is a hexadecimal. And now, if I want to get that original value of 54, what I do is I put the star in front of it, and I get the value of 54. And now here's like the cool thing about pointers, is now I can change that underlying value. So if I put, I have that C value, uh, and if I want to change it to, I can assign star, 
C equals, I'm just going to read it out loud to you people. This is not how you should be doing this. <laughs> uh, I signed to 33. I've changed the value at that location in memory, not just the pointer. I've changed the underlying value. Um, and if I print it out, uh, it's 33. And if I print out B, the original value, it's also 33. Um, and if I print out the actual pointer, it's still the same number. So the address stayed the same. Uh, these might be online for you to look at later. <laughs> um, when do you use pointers? I mean, you could just pass values around, right? Like they do in front end. You could just pass values. It's fine. Um, this is all a design choice. Uh, it would actually save your garbage collector a lot of trouble if you didn't use them. And this isn't a talk on garbage collecting. You can Google it later. Um, good situations include when you have like large data structures um, that you don't want to keep like bringing up and passing around. Right? You just want to have that quick little pointer. And another good thing is mutability. Because if it's a value, it's usually a copy that you're working with. Um, and you can mutate a variable that, that you pass to a function by passing in a pointer. Which is really good if like a bunch of different functions are using that variable. Like say it's like, a, like an email address that you need to update in lots of different locations. Or like a user, anyway. So. Here's another tiny thing of code that I didn't think. <laughs> and essentially, this one, uh, I, have a func I have a struct with the, a person's name. So a, a person struct, this is a string. And then the first one, I'm able to change it. So I have a function called rename, where I pass it a pointer of this person. And then I assign the new name to Beth. So this is a function that renames everybody to Beth. My name is Beth, narcissist. Um, so now, if I have this person here called not Beth, I'm able to rename it by passing the pointer. And now everybody's named Beth. That's great. But if over here, if I did it, and I just call, if I don't have any pointers whatsoever, when I try to rename, rename everybody to Beth, it doesn't work. It's awful. So <laughs> OK, that is uh, the basics of pointers. We've made it through, team. <laughs> And these are more cute gophers. <laughs>